Okay, so I guess we'll kick off. The idea of this session was just out of some conversations yesterday. It was, we're making an assumption that we can get data. And so we've now went through the journey of collecting interesting data, but can we use, and how can we use LLMs, different models like ChatGPT or Claude or any of these LLM models are out there um, to extract useful information out of the data set? And can it be done by effectively a non-subject uh, matter expert in terms of somebody like me, you know, who's a who's not a coder, who's not a data scientist, you know, it's just somebody who's using the power of this this technology and how effective is it or how ineffective is it? So um, we had a bit of a chat yesterday. Ian had um, got a data set. Um, that he had, I think, done some analysis on in the past. And we just had a bit of a joke to say, well, why don't we just have a look at that data set tomorrow? And we'll have a little 45 minute session uh, uh, and take a look at that. So um, Lawrence kindly uh, on the train going down the road yesterday had a bit of a think about it. And then he's been hacking away trying to get this data set uh, so that we can maybe in a size or shape that we can just upload it into ChatGPT. We haven't test this so this is just on the fly so we'll mm -hmm. we'll see how we get on um so what you've got here is it's basically the same user interface that you can get if you sign into uh, openai and sign up for a, a plus account gpd plus which will use the gpt4 model and others um and you can create what they call now you can create your own gpts so instead of just having the the model behave in a kind of um, non-specific way, you can start to tie down how you want that GPT to behave. So you can see that in the instructions there. So Lawrence has created a, a GPT that he's called Health Data Subject Matter Expert. And then in there, he's got the instructions, which I'll let Lawrence take you through in a moment, if you want, Lawrence. If you can, oh, it's quite short. Yeah, so. yeah I'll, I'll read it when you're ready. It's not yeah. very long. Yeah, and then he selected the GPT-4 model to use there. And then um, I'm presuming there's, he's he's added or will add a data set. Is that what we're going to do? Uh, yes, there are two things. Uh, I've added code interpreter. I've, there's a little toggle here. So code interpreter, for those that don't know what it is, is it has the ability to set up its own environment and actually run the code that it suggests is needed to do something. So it can test its own code, find its own errors. There'll be, there'll be errors in the code it suggests and fix them. So there's not a lot of... Uh, Toing and froing with the human saying that I've got an error with that and it has to fix it. It fixes it all it, hidden from you. It's great. Um, uh, and so we need to switch that on because ultimately in analyzing this data, it essentially has to write the code to be able to parse the data and do what we want. We don't, the theory is we don't tell it how to do that. The code interpreter will know how to do it. The other thing, as Steve mentioned, is we'll add the files. So I popped in the Sodu channel uh, uh yesterday or this morning i can't remember when the uh the links to where this data is um so it's it's prescription data in scotland um it rather handily has a pdf guide um that uh that describes the data and i have a feeling steve that when we talk about being able to process uh data with llms i think there's going to be some definition going forwards of what it means to be AI ready. And it could be that we have to work out, you know, so one of the learnings that we will find out is we have to build a minimal guide to the data that maybe you could throw at the GPT. And it means the human uh, instructing the GPT doesn't have to explain things to them. Although it's quite good at working things out, it's even better if it's got a guide, yeah? So maybe making data AI ready, actually. Yeah. So where we've got this, this issue with metadata, uh, in data in, in the data space, this is a, a very special type of metadata, maybe. Yeah, that an a yeah. that will help an AI. We don't know what will be good and what will be bad yet. I think, but this particular guide, I was surprised. Very good. So I'm going to include it. I'm okay. going to ask the GPT to read it first before processing. Yeah. Okay. Because I think that will help. All yeah. right. I think um, understand understanding these how we want to have the data and the format it's in, you know, for different users. So the non-technical uh -huh. user like me, what do I need to do? Can I just throw a PDF at it? So I was using a book the other day, 750 pages. Instead of throwing the book at it, 
mm. in a PDF, uh, split it into three files, into three text mm. files yeah. to make sure that it could, you know, I was more confident it was going to be able to read and use that data. So I think being GPT or LLM ready, I think is a, a, a good a good point. Mm -hmm. so uh, yeah, so basically I'm going to, in here, uh, there's a little thing in the bottom left with files that you can add. And I've got these files already on, on my desktop, okay? But the link to all this stuff is is in the Sodu channel. Uh, so there's a file, I've renamed this file data guide just for my purposes. It's called something else uh, locally on the, on the web. So it's just gonna upload that. Uh, I'm then going to add four data files. Now the data files for this prescription data so it basically describes uh, uh, prescriptions that GPs have given across the Scotland. Um, so you can see how 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 often you know these things are prescribed, how much they cost, etc. Um, they are split month by month, okay. And I think what we do with, with our forty-five minute session, we want to ask it a simple question and see if it can come up with an answer and a data visualization for us, okay? Could, could, Lawrence, could you just? Just maybe open that data guide PDF because you're using that as instruction yeah. okay. to the LLM. So by seeing right. that, the, the room will understand the kind I might of need guidance to, I might we're giving. To, right. Okay. I might need to share a different screen. You can't see that, can you? I've opened no. it. No. So I'll, I'll, just just go, I'll just go into the thing and sh uh, share a different screen. Give me a second. Uh, screen sharing. Uh, stop share. And I'll reshare. Give me a second. Um I tell which one it is uh, there okay so th can you see that yes so it's actually very well written in human terms yeah and we're just going to let we're just going to let gpt loose on that right see what it can glean from it okay now i don't know if i'm honest i don't know if it needs to be uh, of this level of quality to be useful uh, you know, that's probably a, a, an experiment for another time. How minimal information can you prepare as AI metadata, let's say, uh, to make it useful? But this definitely we're going to use and we're going to ask it to read it first and then look at the data. OK, uh, most data won't come with this. And you'll probably find uh, if we get time, I might even try the, uh, the same experiment briefly without this. All right. Uh, I suspect it will do reasonably well as well, but I'm, I'm going to minimize the chance that we hit problems. Uh, in 45 minutes by giving it this as well okay so it's not that you you will need this we don't know how much preparatory information we need from steve's perspective steve's perspective is i want to be a, people to be able to use this without being technical okay uh, and therefore they shouldn't have to be able to explain the data before um uh the you know asking the gpt to use it essentially so it is a case of if the gpt can't understand it with an explanation how much of an explanation is necessary in metadata for AI for data to be AI ready. Let's say we don't know the answer to that right now. Um, I think I think it's also giving people the confidence to know that you can just throw anything at it. This is the come the point we were having earlier, Susan. You know, to allow users to know you can't break anything. You know, th this is not a, it's not a bridge that's going to fall down. If this, you know, you just get on with it and have a go. So to to show people it's this easy. Look, we've got a document here yeah. that kind of we are using as humans to guide us. So mm -hmm. just throw that at the model because it'll help guide the model, presumably, because we're both using language to try to yeah. understand what it is we're trying to do or the guidance that we're getting. So just throw yeah. that at it and let's see what it does. Okay, actually, I'm going to stop sharing because I'm going to maybe open a CSV file. So maybe you can see that before I use it. That might be good. So you know what data we're using. Um, did that CSV file open? Give me a second. I'm not sure if it There's my... Oh, it's, hang on. Right, so if I do that uh it, yes okay i'm just going to share this screen and you can see the data raw is it this one here yeah okay can you see that guys yes okay so obviously uh, if anyone knows you know what a csv file is the, the first row shows the column names which are vague descriptions of the data um and then every other row is a record in the in the data um and they all represent a prescription that a doctor made in Scotland, I believe. Um, that's from my Luddite point of view. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna close that and uh, reshare the GPT session we were in. I think it was that one. Uh, okay. Can you see? I'll just make sure I've got the right screen. Can you see two files in the file store in the bottom left? Uh, yes. 
Right, so I've got the right window then. I've just added the first one. Note that the file name has a uh, year and month in it. And I'm, 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 I may need to tell GPT that. We'll find out. If it can work things out from the data, great. If it gets a bit lost, we can guide it by saying, do you know what, if you're not sure where, what, what date this is for, it's actually in the file name. All right. So we'll keep that in reserve in our back pocket. We'll say nothing about it first and see what GPT does. Yeah. Um, and these are all little things that steer us slightly away from what Steve would ideally want, because the, the average business person probably just wants to say, I need you to do this and it has to have that. How you do it is not my concern. Right. That's a that's a bit of how that I can see coming up. But Steve, in my defense, if we work out in this first pass how many things we had to tell it, yeah. it's possible. The same way we've got a guide that we ask it to read, we could, in theory, this is my theory, uh, we could literally pull together all of those instructions for how you would deal with this data, write a little file for that and add that to the file store so it doesn't have, you just say, read that for all the things you need to know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and but therefore the business person just says, I know there's a there's a process for this. Some techie wrote it for me. Follow yeah. that, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And I think that gets it one step closer to what you want. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So I'll just add the other four files. There. What I've done is I've taken files from. So the latest file was May 23, and I've taken May 22, May 21, and May 20. We're going to do some kind of annual stuff. Yeah. Okay. So I just took the same month in in four different years. All right. So I'm just adding them all to. Uh, the data store, yeah. Okay, it may be that we don't use them all because our question might just take the first and last, right? Uh, it depends. Yeah, say, you know, great. So the, I think the question we're going to ask it is: Can you tell us what the most, uh, which drugs have had the highest uh, percentage growth in prescriptions since twenty twenty? Cool. Can I, I think that's a, yeah. Yeah, a great question, by the way. And I, I, once we run this, it'd be really good to kind of kick around the room people who would like to ask some questions of the data, you know? So what, what question would you like to ask that data? That'd be yeah, quite interesting. Uh, uh, I know, uh, and I'll type it for them, yeah. Yeah, because I know Ian's got a couple of questions. Can I just get a quick show of hands in the room? Has anybody done anything like this with ChatGPT yet? Cool. That's how many, really cool. How many hands? I can't Zero. 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 Actually, I'll put okay. my hand up. One. <laughs> I'll put my hand half up, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah half up. <laughs> well, that's really exciting for me, by the way. Right. Okay. So so what, what we've got is we've got a guide and four files. I'm actually just waiting for three of them to finish loading. And I know I know they will load. I've tried. There's one already. No, sorry. One of them hasn't. Um, there, so I, I, I've been playing with this. So one's done. Good. Uh, so we're just down to the last two. Um, start writing I, your question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Start so the question is, the question is, okay, first of all, I, I, I think I want to be explicit here. Uh, one thing I will say is if you imagine you are, you've got a member of staff and you want to uh, uh, delegate um, a task to them, you know, you would, you would sit down and you would say, this is what I want you to do. Uh, and by the way, these, these bits of information might be useful to read first. Okay. I like to treat chat GPT and, and its ilk like a coworker. Okay. If you if you if you consider it in that kind of context, you probably get more out of it because you're more inclined to explain things where you know you know the explanation is necessary rather than leave a lot of blanks and expect it to be magic. Okay, it is ultimately only trying to simulate a human being. All right, so we can't expect it to be superhuman except in the in the case where it has infinite memory because we don't have infinite memory but ultimately it's just trying to do what a human would do in terms of language understanding and and following instructions okay so if you gave a human uh, a, a malformed uh, set of requirements you may get something less than optimal back okay so treat it like a human and you'll probably get the optimal results out of it um, someone once described chat gpt to me as having infinite interns. And that's probably the best description I've ever heard. Yeah. <laughs> um, you've got to be explicit with it and you've got to be prepared to kind of review and give feedback. And if you do it in the way you normally would, you'll, you'll get a lot out of it. Um, but it can do things a lot faster, obviously, hence the infinite interns. Um, so everything's loaded. We're gonna, go, we're gonna focus on a single question just to make it tractable for, for this session. But if anyone wants to ask other questions of the data, 
once we've got to a point where we say that's as much as we can do here, <laughs> then we can see what else it can do. Um, so um, I would say uh, read the data guide PDF to understand the data and then answer uh, and then tell me which and then, and then so provide me with information about which drugs have had the highest percent uh, I'll write it in word percentage um growth in prescription volume since 2020 uh hmm. yep so there's a couple of things here um what you can do is you can take this question and go to another llm and say i am trying to understand this data set and this is the type of information that i'm looking for how would i best articulate this question to get the most impactful result and mm -hmm. it will write a prompt that is 10x better than the prompt that you're about to write yeah, I okay. will tell you something. So I, I, I will, I will take that, Steve, and I will raise you something else. One thing I will probably do at the end of this is when we've had to go round the houses to fix things, right? I will probably ask this LLM if you had to explain to someone else, like I've got to take this to a third party, yeah, uh, how we, yeah. what the requirements of what we had to do to get to this point. Can you summarize it as a set of instructions? And yeah. that I will cut and paste in and add as the extra file. Correct. Okay, yeah. <laughs> that was my that was my intention actually. Um, and yeah, because we've got to simulate someone coming to this cold. Yeah. So add and run. Okay. We are at uh, what time? Yeah, quarter past. Okay, not too bad. Um, okay, to assist you with your request, I'll need to have access to the guide. Oh, I did. It's so, but I, it looks like I have to name it, right? It's in the file store. It didn't put, yeah, it's, it's it's failed on me earlier than it had. Uh, did before. you did you press save on those on the left hand ah, side? Ah, right, okay. Well done, sharp eyed person in the room. It wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll just what I'll do is I'll uh, control the question because what I'll do is I'll clear the whole thing and start again, right? But just save first, yeah, okay. That's a good point. It could be. It could just be that. We'll find out. We'll find out if that was it. if that was it. Then it will work. Now, if it does, if that wasn't, I have to name it. Um, oh, there we go. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. Thank you very much. Whoever said save. <laughs> right. So it's reading it. Uh, it'll probably come up with a lot of uh, uh, information about what it understands from the uh, file. Um, Just as a question while it's thinking, have you, yeah. over the last, when well, you've been trying this out, have you asked it to visu visualize any of this data yet? Ah, it will visualize it. And the reason it will visualize it, I skipped over something. You're a skilled, this is a description of what it is. It's, you're telling it what it is. A skilled data analyst subject and subject matter expert in the UK Department of Health. You can analyze and interpret data and answer questions about health-related issues. Your answers will always include data visualizations of an appropriate form that provide additional clarity and support your views. Brilliant. Right. So it sh I shouldn't have to ask it, right? Because I put it in the if you have set I've set the assistant up in that way. Um, and thus far with my experiments, I haven't had to ask, but we'll see. It may, you know, it's it's not always deterministic in in oh wait, hang on. It says there's a persistent issue with extracting content. Oh. Could you please specify how the data is organized across the... That's weird. It's, it used to be able to read that PDF. How bizarre. Um, I'll just say, can you try by opening the CSV files instead? We'll see what it does without the PDF. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have to explain it because I'm a business person, right, Steve? Right. <laughs> That's the first time it did that. It's always been able to read the PDF for me so, so far. So that takes us back to the, you know, the you know, 
if we did some tests on it, we could see whether we should convert PDFs to text files or if there's a different file type yeah. that's, that's more reliable. Yeah, though it can read PDF, it just so, for some reason. No, in no, this it can. It's just, I've I've done it through intuition. Yeah. I kind of went, oh, sometimes I've seen PDFs being a bit flaky, so I'll try yeah. to remove that flakiness by yeah. um, putting it in a text file. Or... Okay, hell, it appears that we're experiencing. Oh, that is really weird. I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this, this <laughs> live demos, eh? No, yeah, actually, <laughs> I, I, actually, Lawrence, just for fun, yeah. just type in there. Uh, you're embarrassing yourself. Try harder. Okay. Right, let's see what it does. <laughs> yeah. Uh, see, 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 seriously, I at one point a couple of days ago said you're having me pulling my hair out. I've told you four <laughs> times, do this, you know. As I said, treat it like any co-worker that annoys you, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I will just remove all of these and add them again. Okay. I've had this working before, so I know it works. And you know it works, Steve. Yeah. yeah um, it's not, do it. And and I opened that PDF in front of you, so you know it's a valid file as well. If someone's saying something, can you relay it to me, Steve? Because I may not hear every word. You you don't have to worry about it. It's the uh, what is it? It's the fastest adopted technology that's been known to man so far. So there must be some value in it so far, even if we can't demonstrate that value today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. And there is there there is there is a backstop here if this doesn't work, Steve. Is that you can actually add it in the thread as well, which I'll do next if it's having problems uh, in the setup. And you know, although is it actually? Please wait for files to finish uploading, and then I'll save. Um, and I will I will grab that first instruction again. Clear that. Yeah. So I've I've had it write code because I can't write code, and I had it create. I couldn't even tell you the language it was written in. You know, I couldn't. It was. I have no idea. And I had GPT in, th in 30 minutes at midnight before I was going to bed. I was just like, oh, I wonder if you can. I sat down in 30 minutes by saying to chat GPT, I've got a VTT file, which is a subtitle file for, for video. Uh, it's in English. I want to translate it to Pash2. Yeah. And um, I am assuming that you can do this with the Google API, you know, to Google Translate. But I've got no idea how to do it. Explain to me the steps I need to go through. And then walk, work, walk me through the process step by step. And within 30 minutes, I had a site online that I could upload my file, hit the language I wanted it to go to, had a little timer, had a sad smiley, I even put a sad smiley, and then a happy smiley when it dropped the file in my, my Explorer. So I, I can't write any code. Not one line of code can I write. And the next morning, I said to my team, I actually then said, oh, I want to do the same thing with XLF files. And we did the same thing. So within an hour, I had two file converters and gave it to my team and it was because of a company that was trying to charge me six thousand pound for the privilege and i just sat there at night sniffing I went, that smells like they've just got google translate with an api and they're charging me a lot of money to to do it so it can you know it can write code for and you don't even need to know what the code is saying because you can just check it's delivering the output that you're looking for you know so from a complete non-technical user you can oh this looks this looks promising is it <laughs> yeah, there's uh, there's some information that looks like it's the contents of the file. There we go. It's it's succeeding some. So it's given us a lot of information about. I mean, it's still processing stuff, but it's spat out a lot of information about uh, what it understands here. Uh, so it's probably given a summary of what it's read in that. Uh, to proceed, I will need to identify which data files contain the prescription volume information and how to extract 
and analyze the data. So it's now looking at the files, I think. Um, yeah, let's see what it does with that. Because I've said it, I've told it nothing. Well, what have I said, actually? My question was very vague. Well, not specific in one sense, but the, vague in the how, yeah? Um, and it says just, yeah, to understand the data, then provide me with information, blah, blah, blah. So I've said nothing about what other files are there, yeah? Um, and uh, to upload, these pits have non-descriptive names. Well, it's still running. So it's, I will inspect each file. Yeah, so it's looked at the file names to figure out. I mean, it should be able to see that they're CSVs. If not, I would. it's sometimes asked me to say what kind of data it is. And if I tell it it's CSV, then it, it's quite happy. So it might it might get a bit confused here initially. Um, but as I said, I'm, I, I am trying my best, Steve, as a technical guy, to pretend not to be technical, yeah? So... <laughs> <laughs> I think for the technical folks, I think there is a way to look at what it's doing. You know, you can follow its actions as opposed to just, you know, what I would be doing is just staring at that spinning thing, drinking my coffee. But, you know, technical people would maybe want to know what's actually going on behind and you can see see its activities and what it's up to. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you can also. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's figured it out, is it? Um, let's find out. CSV. Yeah. Okay, it's it's identified them as CSV, yeah, and so it's it's now processing the data. Um, the one thing you can do, and I tried this earlier, but it kept timing out on me, and it's not done that before. Um, but I was trying to get it to provide me with the code to generate these data visualizations, and I was also saying to it, uh, "I'm going to give you some files." Um, and I'm, you know, I'm going to ask you for, uh, uh, you know, the question over a particular time period. But I want you to consider those files might change and the time period might change. So give me code that has variables for those, so I can play with that. Yeah, um, and it's the kind of thing that you would say to a work colleague. There's a set of requirements. I need you to write me a program that does this, but I want to be able to control certain things. Yeah. So you just, if you're good at formulating requirements, you can use that experience and that skill to basically be precise with the LLM and get closer to what you want. Uh, and I, I would probably expect that code to, uh, you know, maybe not be quite what I want, but it, I'll be able to read it and adjust it. And it's, it should be a lot quicker than writing it from scratch, basically. Yeah. And that's what I was hoping to do because I was hoping to write some declarative code to do this so we could compare the outputs, but I did, didn't succeed, Steve, because it kept timing out. <laughs> Um, so it's 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 seen it's identified the the fields in there, and now to analyze the growth in prescription volume, we need to calculate blah blah. It's telling you how it's going to do stuff. Um, so again, if it's not quite what you want, once it comes back from this, you can say, well, actually, I didn't want that. Could you do it this way? Yeah. So we've not you know been clear about the treatments. We've just said growth since twenty twenty. Yeah. There may be a if, if, if there was a metric we wanted and there are a number of ways you could calculate it, it might choose one that might not have been the metric we wanted. We'd need to be more precise, basically. Obviously, growth by percentage, there's only one way to do that. Um, so it is now, it's, uh, so the, the code interpreter lines are it trying to do the work out the code for this, basically. And then the, the subject matter expert comes back and explains what's going on. Um, it, oh, hang on, it, without the correct file extensions, Rubbish. Well, it's still going. We'll find out what happens. Oh, I think it might be okay now. So it hit a few problems. Yeah, but that's the so that's probably the code interpreter trying various things and getting errors. Yeah, and then iterating on itself. So if you've got ChatGPT without code interpreter, uh, it would probably give you you know try uh, give you some code to try, and you'll find there are problems, and you might have to tell it what the problems are, and it will try again. Here it's automating that in an iterative sense, and that's what code interpreter does. Um, so it's still there's a little spinny thing at the bottom here, so you know it's still thinking. Yeah, when that stops spinning, it's basically given control back to you. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's doing something now. It's explaining how it's uh, uh, um, processing the data. So it's obviously succeeded in. <laughs> getting some numbers um lawrence uh Ian yes. here. so steve is on his laptop um steve's asking where can he find the files you're using did you say you put links to them in the slack group the, the so do channel either last night or first thing this morning 
Um, I think the page you, you gave me was the latest data set, but there's a link on there, which I've also put in Sodu, that is to the page where all these monthly files are. And I gave a link to the guide as well. Aha, we got a memory error there, does it say? Yeah. Yeah, so the, the, we've got a lot of data here. It's a memory problem, but I've, I've seen that before and it's fixing it. It will find a more efficient way of doing it. Um, so for instance, I know one way that I can do this and it may well it may well do it itself. If, if it's still a problem, I will say just focus on those drugs that have significant uh, prescriptions in 2020 and that cuts down the um, amount of uh, data it has to process, yeah? But again, these are all things that are technical, Steve, and should end up in that guide. Yeah, that, that would be hidden yeah. from you. Um, but I think in this first pass, we have to figure out what the complexities are. There are some complexities we probably can't avoid um, because we don't, you know, the guide's not been written yet. Yeah. Oh, it's still got a memory error. If it gives up, I'll tell it to, to, to just use a subset and we'll see what happens. So it's fine. It's, 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 it's trying different uh, technical approaches here without us having to prompt it. And that's probably the code interpreter's um, skill set. Yeah. I should say, uh, whatever happens here, I have actually seen a graph. So I know this can work because <laughs> um, I was playing with it earlier today to, to figure out, you know, where, where the problems might lie. Mm. Sorry, Lawrence, I'm just giving the mic to Gautam. Yeah. Uh, just a quick check, Lawrence. I remember you did some tinkering with the COVID data last year. Yeah. Um, do you still have it uh, with you as an example? The, the COVID the data. The capability. Yeah. Uh, but, well, uh, that, that was a prompt in standard ch chat GPT. Unless I cut and pasted it somewhere in a Slack to, uh, to remember, no, probably. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. But the, the, this was an interesting example as a yeah, plan yeah. B in case this doesn't go forward. Uh -huh. uh, but it's oh, hang on, it's it's actually got to a point where it's no longer. So what's it seems to have given control back to me, is it? Because it's not spinning there. Let's see if I can type something. Uh, can you possibly just focus on those? drugs that have, uh, uh, let's say on, yeah, let's say the top 25% of, uh, uh, so those, those drugs, those drugs that uh, are in the, top 25% of all prescriptions in 2020. Sure, okay, there we go. They're gonna filter it. That might make it better, okay. Because chances are the top ones uh, growth-wise are probably in that top set, all right? So it may be that our output isn't top, perfect because we're removing the last 75 percent here but just for the purpose of the demo um <clears throat> we'll see if we can get it to do that um i did find one thing when i ran this through earlier we got some very large numbers uh because possibly one or two drugs had very few prescriptions in 2020 so you know any amount of increase is going to be a large percentage number so we did end up having to filter out the the the, the, the less frequent ones from 2020 anyway to avoid that um Good, good. Right. It looks like it's making progress. Um, I don't know if everyone can read everything on the screen at the speed with which it, it scrolls past. Um, but I'm presuming it's it will make it's it's not beneficial for me just to sit here and read everything word by word. Um, <laughs> so um knowing this data. <laughs> One of the things that you would know as a programmer that you would potentially want to teach it is a little bit around the BNF code. 
so okay. that long b nef code um takes into account the preparation and the drugs yes. so normally you'd only use potentially the first six or seven numbers you're you're absolutely right um yeah. i'd spotted that um and actually my method was to just tell it to ignore in in, in string terms tell it to ignore the preparations and the dosages and the uh the concentrations um and do some further processing on on uh um non-alphanumeric characters to just convert them all to a single space just to be absolutely certain because yes there's some duplication that will come back Okay. Again, I guess that kind of stuff you could put into that preview file if you knew, but exactly. you're not going to know that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, I learned it through my experience earlier today. Yes. Now, actually, I've noticed it hasn't given us the data bit, so I'm going to ask. It should have done. Um, can so yeah? Can you give us a data visualization of the top ten drugs? please. Let's see what happens here. Yeah, in, in the past, it's just given it to me, but because we've had so many round the houses things, it's probably forgotten. It's in its initial instructions to always give me a data bit. Um, Actually, uh, number two and three there are exactly what you're talking about. They are likely to be different preparations of the same drug. So, yeah, they are. Do, uh -huh. I would say two and three make me a little bit suspicious. Just and, because... one, and one and five as well, actually, quite well, probably. So... One and five, so the way it works is the first two numbers is like the chapter number. Yeah. And the second two numbers are then a particular type of that. Um, like number four and five are type, and then you would normally ignore the letters. So, uh -huh. but the first two don't sound like chapters in, in the BNF. So they make me a little bit suspicious. Right. Okay, so when we get when I when we finally get a data viz, and I've just noticed it's had a problem trying to do that, and it didn't have that problem early today. If we get as far as the data viz, we will probably see that, mm -hmm. and we we can try by asking it, can you just focus on the first so many characters of the the uh, BNF code uh, to 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 basically remove du uh, duplications and see what it does. Yeah, and can I just check this environment is locked down, is it? So it's not using anything else that's out in the internet around some of this uh what do you mean by that so like for like the bnf code if you basically type that bnf code into google it's going to pull up a page that would tell you All information right. around that prescription um yeah i don't think i don't think it has access to the internet uh i may be wrong i think i had a, a experience with those that maybe think it didn't um so it may be i couldn't tell you for certain though um, I, th uh, but there are, I mean, you, the thing is you can, there are functions here, all right, uh, that you can build and they can probably give you links to things that are out on the internet perhaps, but maybe without it, it's probably just contained, but that's my educated guess from, from, from my, my experience. Um, and it's still processing. So that's good. It hasn't, um, uh, yep. Steve's asking, can you drop one of those files? One of the CSV files into the Slack channel. Please. Uh, th there's is he able is he able to click on the link that to the page where they all are, or does he actually want that specific file and not the page? Because I gave a link to where all those files are month by month. So, so he wants the file apparently because you've aggregated it. So he would like the file. Okay. Um. Uh, let's see what I can do here. We uh, also were just commenting that you're very polite when you ask this model. You use please. <laughs> thank you. Well, it's how, it's how I deal with humans. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, gosh. Um, I, and so, you said to treat it like our co-workers and not many of my co-workers say please when they ask something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, we, we've hit a problem, guys. This is the first time it's not been able to do a, a data viz, which really surprises me. Uh, 
you can give me the code for it, but, but that's a bit, you know, for a 45 minute session, we'll end up going around the houses. Um, but uh, yeah, well, this is what live de demos does for you. Um, I don't know why that's the case. It's weird. It was behaving so much better earlier today. I might stop saying please. Um, <laughs> um, so the um, current environment, that's just rubbish. So, sorry, Steve's yeah. asking if you've sent that file. Oh, it's... I'll do that now. Wow. Uh, da, 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 da. So okay. it'll be, in... yeah. Steve, I don't think you said please, and that's maybe. <laughs> I'm in the Sodu channel. I can probably do a plus and go to my. Sorry, Julie, did you want the mic? Have you got a question? Desktop. Yeah, I've got to remember where I'm, I'm at. I'm, I'm just feeling a little bit concerned for Chat GPT. It seems to be having a little bit of a. Can you can you tell it it's all right? I'll, I'll ask. I'll ask. Actually, are you okay? And I'll say this to it as well. You didn't <laughs> stop it have any problems with this request earlier today let's see what it does <laughs> uh and you can tell steve that a, a an individual file from 2020 is being currently uploaded to the sodu channel and 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 if he wants actually yeah. do you know what and say thank you <laughs> I will when it gives me control back. <laughs> um, uh, upload. I'll put the guide in as well uh, in the Sodu channel. Uh, although I think that was already there, but just to make sure. So, so Lawrence Z in here. I think we're going to have to yeah, stop in about five minutes or so. I'm aware um, of that, yeah. <laughs> and it's been fascinating. Um, so happy for you to run for the next three or four minutes, um, and then we'll have to terminate because we're going to do a wind-up after that. But Yeah, that's fine. Um, Please carry on just now. MDL. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Steve saying, can you copy and paste your original question into the interpreter? Please. Into the interpreter? Did you mean into the interpreter? Or did you mean into the uh, uh, Slack into channel? Into the chat box, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm trying to get to it, but it keeps getting get, poking me to the bottom. Actually, let me see if I, it's still in my cut and paste memory. Yeah, it is. There we go. Okay. What I'll do is I'll what I'll do is I'll also I will also because if he sorry, wants all the fight, yeah. Sorry, Lawrence. I think Steve's saying, can you copy and paste it into Slack, please, uh, rather than into the, um, the 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 thread? Oh no, no! So it's in the Sodu channel in Slack. All right. There's no. Can you see it there? Yeah. Yeah. So, that, do you want me to put it in a different place in Slack? <laughs> Gosh, lots of errors today. Well, not even today, this afternoon. It was fine this morning. Um, <laughs> how bizarre. Right. That's what happens with 45 minutes. Um, yeah. Uh, Steve. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you want to, if you and I want to keep in touch on this, we can work work through this a little further offline at some point. Yes. Uh, Ian, you got that HDMI cable? Just a second. So yeah. I know you just, I know you just picked that up. <laughs> I just, because I, I was looking down at my feet, and there's a, there's a big <clears> cable there. A minute ago. Here we are. I don't know. <laughs> oh, Julian, uh, that was shocking. The data required for the plot is not defined within the scope of the function. Oh, wow. Okay, well, he's going to try one more time, he says, so we'll see what it does. Um, I've got no idea what it was doing behind, under the bonnet here this time, because it... Yeah, I'll it, see if it's got anything worth sharing. It's a little bit of worth sharing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe this, maybe this particular chat GPT I got this time it was on the lash last night. Yeah. Uh, Uh, for your information, uh, Steve has 
doing his own GPT here, um, which I think he's going to be able to share on screen. I'm not right. sure you will see it, Lawrence, but That's uh, right. uh -huh. those in the room will. Right. Okay. Oh, do you, so, Steve, do you want uh, a 2023 file then? Because I only gave you the 2020 one. No, he's just he's just playing with one file. He said. All right. Okay. Okay, well, mine's failed, basically. I'm not going <laughs> to... So, I know. Right, we're going to have to wind up. So Steve's going to cast fine. his screen on our screen here just now, mm -hmm. and then we're going to have to stop, I'm afraid. That's that's fine. That's fine. These things happen. Um, uh, but but yes, that that person that that pointed out the the the, uh, the BNF codes that was that was an uh, an issue I knew we were going to come up with if it had given us a data visualization because you could see the duplications there, um, and I had solved that by by doing kind of string um, manipulation rather than the BNF code. But I had spotted there were similarities in the BNF code as well. Um, so yeah, and those are all things that should we say subject matter experts would know, or in my case, working with the strings, you know, uh, the data experts in general would know. Um, and, and those are the things we'd want to learn from this and put in a, a, a set of uh, principles that we could well, supply to it next time. Lawrence, just to let you know, I've just, you can't see, but what I've done is I've just opened chat GPT on an explorer uh, and I've just uploaded one of those CSV files just to show mm -hmm. the room what it's done in an yeah. instant um yeah. so i asked a question a pretty simple question it wasn't a complex mm -hmm. it wasn't a complex um structure question at all you know read the data file and understand the data and then provide me with information about which drugs have had the highest percentage growth in prescription since 2020 mm -hmm. hmm. yeah. but as i said i was typing at pace and not paying much attention so Yeah. Okay, and then I said, that's yeah, a good point. Yeah, because I've asked it to look at something it doesn't have. Yeah. Yeah. Can you? Sorry, I can't quite hear you. So, Ian, do your thing, will you? Do your thing. I can't hear. So then this is what we're, I've then just said, can you please visualize this data and highlight any, okay, so it's, mm -hmm. is that a struggle with that as well? Maybe not, you never know. <laughs> I've, uh, in my one that you can't see, I've just said, give me a bar graph, not even said please. <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's weird, because uh, I've, I've had it uh, generate lots of graphs earlier today, so I know it, it can do it. It's paid, it's pro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But I haven't prepped it in any way. What I just quickly opened it up and just threw a file at it, and, and didn't even. It is the, the is the the paid one yet. There you go. Hey, I can see a graph in the distance. Yeah. So it can it can generate the graphs for you generally. Yes, and I don't know why mine one one's just failing at this point in time. But hey, that's life. Again, I can't take that. So, Ian, can you? How would you prefer that data? Sure. And, and can you can you see uh steve could you see because i it's too far away for me to see can you see if there's a obvious kind of duplication of drugs there just different treatments and uh and dosages and things So you repeat that, sorry. Yeah, uh, I can't see at the distance. In that graph that you've got on the screen, does it show uh, kind of duplication in terms of same same drug, different treatments and, and, and dosages and things? It says no. It doesn't, okay. 
we're yeah, going to have to wind up, I'm afraid, because we're running quite a bit over. Absolutely here. fine. Absolutely fine. No, no worries. Yeah. yeah. So, so it's attempted to do some um, adjustment to the colour scale. I think Leslie's still shaking her head, I'm pretty sure. So, Right, listen, I'm going <laughs> to wind up now. So, Lawrence, thank you for um, your dialing in and things. No worries. Um, and, yeah, we'll catch up next time. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, cheers. I'm going to close the call. Okay. I, I heard the word arrow. I am just about done. Okay, come.